we have been looking at uh, the book of Galatians, and so we're going to continue in. Today, we're going to read Galatians 3, verse 15, all the way to the end of the chapter, and we'll see how far we get in the discussion, um, but we may just finish out chapter 3 today, so we'll start here. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 15. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterwards, does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Why then the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the offspring should come to whom the, promises, the promise had been made and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary applies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everyone under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come. We are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. And so what, what Paul is jumping into, he's, he's finishing out this chapter. Now, now, first off, I love, notice verse 15, he immediately says, brothers. And, and, and brothers was this very... Um, uh, it was a term of endearment, right? It was this term of just kind of softening the blow, right? I mean, he had just gotten done calling them idiots, <laughs> you know, you foolish Galatians. But Paul, in his typical way, even when when smacking somebody over the head with the truth, smacking them over the head with the truth, he then would soften the blow a little bit by talking about you know, calling them brothers and sisters and, and, and making a connection with them in this. So, you know, what he's talking about here, and we've been mentioning it before, this idea of justification by works versus justification by faith. And the, the Judaism side, the Jews were trying to proclaim this justification by the law. And, and the way the rabbis did that was acting like this law was older than everything. That the law, because it was at this point, I mean, it was old, you know, so history had become legend and legend had become, you know, myth or however you want to put it. That's how Tolkien put it. And, and, and so... This idea of the law being ancient was what they preached over and over. But Paul was showing that the faith of Abraham and his promise of God, that it was older than even the law. In fact, he puts a number to it, that it was 430 years older than the law. That The law came later. Uh, the law was a newer construct, that it wasn't this ancient, old idea. So what he's saying is it was Judaism, not Christianity, that had strayed from the original message. Wow, I mean, that's a pretty big statement, isn't it? You know, hey, good morning, Michaela. Good morning, Mom and Dad. Um, so, you know, he's making this idea that Judaism, not Christianity, is what had strayed. Because, you know, the Jews were saying the Christians were well off base, that they weren't following the law, and the, the law of Moses had to be followed. 
And he's going, no, 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 no. The law is not as ancient as this gospel of Abraham, the covenant of Abraham, the covenant of grace. Hey, Jason, good morning. You know, he talked about first in verse 15, these promises, the promises of Abraham, that they were permanent, that they were lasting. You know, these promises centered around Jesus and not offspring of the flesh, but spiritual seed, the spiritual promise who is Jesus Christ. Good morning, Katie. And Jesus was the promise, the promised seed for both the Jew and the Gentile. He didn't come just for one, right? They kept using the law and saying, well, it was all about the Jews and only for the Jews. And Paul's going, no, 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 no. Go before the law to the gospel of grace and that it said that it was coming for all. That, you know, the uh, through the offspring, the individual, through Jesus, you know, the gospel would come for everyone, the Jew and the Gentile. The law... One of his, you know, his main point, the law came later. Now, I mean, when I, when I was reading that, the, one of the first things that came to my mind was how easily we forget history. It's not taught for whatever reason. You know, you look at, uh, uh, I remember my sister's friend, Lynn, was from England, and uh, um, Lynn would joke and go, you know, we have buildings older than your country you know uh, we we are our history in america is relative compared to when you go to europe and you're on a road that was put in place by the romans say 1500 years ago right that history becomes relative and so the jews in the judaism side was saying well the law is the oldest and paul's trying to remind them no 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 the covenant of Abraham was 430 years before even that. You know, it's easy when we don't know history to be ignorant of some things. And that's kind of what Paul's getting at there is because they lost the history, they were ignorant on a few things. For example, um, you know, I, I've in the past, I've picked on a couple different things. You know, one, when I, when I was in retail, uh, I would have people all the time come in and they would look for a specific translation. Um, and that would be the King James only. And they would, when I would ask them and say, so, so why, why King James only? What, what is it? Why, why only that one? Why can't you read one you understand, you know? And, and uh, more often than not, I got the deer in the headlight looks. They didn't understand why they could only read out of the King James. In fact, I did have a couple of people that were honest and one said, well, that was because that's what Jesus spoke. Okay. Um, yeah, Jesus didn't speak King James. You know, he was Jewish, Hebrew, Aramaic, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, not King James. Um, King James didn't come about till 1611. You know, so it was still a modern translation, if you will, um, compared to Hebrew and Greek. But because we don't know our history, we easily get persuaded to believe something that's maybe not true. Same thing, let's say rapture theory. Okay. Now, I've mentioned this before. We're not going to go into detail. You know, I was under great professors who one believed the rapture, one didn't want, you know, and they both said, hey, if you're right, I'll high five you all the way up in the rapture. If I'm right, at least I'll be prepared, right? You know, and and they said, you know, they taught me that there's room for disagreement around some of these non-core doctrine. You know, they're not the dogmas, okay? They're the doctrines. And, and the rapture theory, which was not in any writing whatsoever until 1826, came about through a Presbyterian minister, in the early 1800s, it wasn't until John Darby of the 1900s that it really took hold. And it really wasn't until uh, Left Behind series that it like blossomed, right? But, but we preach it sometimes as if that is the only view of end times because we don't know the history. We don't understand where it was or we get caught up in a Gnostic belief that maybe Jesus was not fully God, that he was full, you know, he, he, he was just a man, completely just a man. Um, you know, we get caught up on a word like begotten, you know, which begotten meant that he was born, 
It was the son of, right? <laughs> the begotten of. There was nothing divine about that word, but we we get caught into it because we don't know all of the history. And that's what Paul is pointing here is going, no, it's not the law. You see, it's this covenant, this covenant with Abraham that was 430 years earlier, which was this covenant of grace. That it, if the inheritance could be gained by the law, he was saying it would it would cause people to forget that promise of God. If I could earn the promise through the law, then why was Jesus even necessary that we had to come to Jesus through the promise of God, through through the promise of Jesus? You know, the law was to help us though, right? You know, Paul doesn't to abolish the law. Paul is going, the law was there to help diagnose our situation. It was to help diagnose the symptoms, the issues, the, the corruptness of our hearts that he was there kind of speaking in. And that's why Jesus gave the law or God gave the law to Moses was because of our transgressions. We continued to sin and we needed guidelines, right? Like a child, you put guidelines. There's a stove, you don't touch it. Okay, I can't trust you not to touch it, so you don't come within five feet of it if it's on, right? You know, I mean, you set guidelines and guardrails. It was there to enlighten and correct us so that we would turn to the promise because we would realize there's nothing I can do, nothing I can do to be right in, under the law. The law was not against God's promise, but to show the need for God's promise. The law showed us our need for Jesus, for his cleansing blood on the cross. You know, the term here, I love it, verse 24 and 25. Uh, so then the law was our guardian. By now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. And so uh, um, the guardian mentality, the King James uses a completely different word. It doesn't really mean a guardian. What what the, the term meant in Greek was like a guardian. It was a schoolmaster. It was somebody to direct you and guide you and smack your knuckles when you were off base. And so that's what the law was meant to do. But now that we are under, the now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. We don't need that guardian per se. Now, does that mean the law is completely abolished? Paul will talk about that more in a bit, but it's the Holy Spirit creating a law unto us, right? It's the Holy Spirit that kind of becomes that guardian in our hearts versus the law needing to be the guardian for us, right? Abraham's covenant, it, it was, he was showing his independent to and superior to the Mosaic covenant, that the Abraham covenant of grace came first and it could not be changed by the Mosaic covenant. It didn't become law, because Abraham's covenant was now like thrown out. I mean, Abraham didn't agree to that, right? God nowhere says that this, okay, my covenant with Abraham is now finished and I'm gonna make a new covenant through Moses and it's all gonna be law because you guys are idiots and you need the law. No, he was trying to give them the law to help draw them in, help them to understand their need for him, their need for a savior, right? Hey, good morning, Penny. So Abraham's covenant was designed to benefit the whole of human race, Jew and Gentile alike. The Mosaic Covenant was confined to a sinful nation. The Mosaic Covenant was written to an Israelite nation. It was written to help guide and direct and show them the errors of their way. It was limited in application to them. And in his perfect provision, God, and it was valuable, and God sent through a perfect provision through Jesus Christ. Good morning, Robert. So verse 18, uh, um, here's another one. So when you look at verse 18, he uses this term of inheritance for the very first time. Paul had not used that word of inheritance. And now in Galatians, he's starting to talk about an inheritance, that inheritance, that blessing that comes from God for, for those of us when we believe. It, for if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by the promise. But God gave it to Abraham by a promise. It, it, he's saying it's all through that promise, the promise of the seed, of the offspring, the individual of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who died on the cross, 
so that we have a law unto ourselves and our heart through the Holy Spirit, not through the old Mosaic law that just shows us and reveals to us how broken we are and we can never be right before God without Jesus Christ, right? Here's the way to put it. The law always demands do this, do this, do this or else, right? Stay under 55 or you might get a speeding ticket. Don't murder or you're going to jail. Don't steal or you're, you know, I mean, there's, there's always a demand, do this or else. The promise of God always offers a gift. Accept this. Accept my son and live, right? It's that simple. You know, a couple, couple things on this. What Paul has been talking all the way through here up to this point, all in the first three chapters of Galatians, and really it's this. One, everyone comes into a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ not by observing the law. We grow through our faith in Jesus Christ, not by observing the law. The second thing is that you admit that you came to Christ, right? That's what he got the Galatians to do, that you need to admit that you came to Christ through faith in Jesus and the Holy Spirit and not by works of the law. You, you weren't saved because, oh, I finally worked enough that I, oh, I'm saved, right? I, I, that wasn't the way it happened. It was by realizing how limited you were. And, and, and here's here's one. So um, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of um, some of the different old beliefs of the church. Some of them are way off. Uh, but there was one story that I, I love, and it was the story of a a vision of a hermit. And it was called, uh, or it was basically, he had a, a, a vision of a ladder, um, kind of like Jacob's ladder, right? You know, he had this vision of the ladder and, and he's standing at the bottom of it. And the ladder's going from earth to heaven. And he hears God say, come to me, but you can't use the ladder. And so he then in his vision has this lifetime of trying to figure out how do I get to heaven if I can't climb the ladder? There's no other way. I mean, I can't jump that high. I can't fly. I, I can't. There's nothing. There's no way to get to heaven. And finally, towards the end of his life, he's in, in the vision. He sits down at the bottom of a tree and just goes, I can't do it. I can't do it. And that's when God's hand reaches down from heaven and says, that's exactly right. Picks him up and brings him up to heaven. It's this picture of there is nothing by works that we can do that will ever earn our salvation. We're broken human beings who need a perfect God. That's it. That's what the Abraham covenant, the promise shows us that through Jesus Christ and the promise of faith in him, we can have eternal life. You know, the next thing that Paul's kind of talking about in these first three chapters, kind of summarizing, is the law imposes a curse on anyone who doesn't 100% follow it. And no one ever has, except for Jesus Christ. We're all broken. None of us are perfect. Only Jesus Christ. The next thing, uh, Paul then again summarizing, Christ died on the cross to redeem us from the curse of the law. And Paul still, as we're summarizing these first few chapters, the law was given centuries after, centuries after Abraham. And it can't alter the original covenant and promise of God, which was the promise of grace. The law was never meant to change that. The law was never meant to make a alternate way to make it Christ and it was faith in Jesus Christ, faith and trust in Jesus alone. Remember, but what the law does and what that reminder does and the Holy Spirit does is it transforms us inwardly so that we want to be different outwardly and corporately, right? It doesn't leave us the same. Hey, Megan, good morning. And then what it finishes with and where we're at so far and finishing chapter three is this idea that you have to make a choice between the law or the promise of grace 
What's it going to be? And how quickly, like the Galatians, we fall back. We accept the gospel of Jesus in faith. We believe in faith. We Maybe it, one day at an altar, you gave your life to him and said, God, I, just like the guy at the bottom of the ladder, I don't have it all together. I can't make it to heaven on my own. I need your grace. And Jesus reached in and said, by that admittance, by faith and trust in me, you're saved. And then we began to make it about works. And we very quickly can do more for God than we do with God. We become the Martha in the story, right? Who is busy doing for God and getting burnt out, stressed out, and upset instead of doing it with God. Sitting at his feet, growing, learning from him. So that when the true passion lights in your soul to work with homeless or, or to work with drug addicts or wherever it is that God calls you to pray for your neighbor, to encourage your neighbor, he gives you the strength to be able to do it. Hey, Grandpa Mike, how are you doing? Good to have you with us. So that's kind of the story of where we're at so far in Galatians. It's justification by faith, not by works. And Paul is saying the law came secondary. Abraham's covenant of grace was first. The law was second. And remember, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. He came to fulfill it, right? came to fulfill the law, the law that points us to the promise of Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ is where this ends, right? He ended the verse saying, there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. You know, if it wasn't for that, um, I, I, I don't know all of you real well, but I don't know that any of you are Jewish. You know, I, I don't know if any of you are a part of the original Israelite tribes and can trace your lineage back to Judah or Joseph, Manasseh, Ephraim, any of them, right? Reuben, Levi. And if not, then without the gospel of grace, if it was a gospel of law given only to the Israelites, then we wouldn't have a choice. We wouldn't have a chance. And everything that Paul wrote in the New Testament is all for naught because his whole point is that Jesus Christ came for everyone. He was the offspring not to give Abraham a great nation through his own children, right? And through his seed only, but the great nation was through the offspring of the offspring, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who said, all can come to me. All nations will be blessed, is what he told Abraham in the Abrahamic covenant, right? All nations will be blessed through Jesus. And I'm grateful as a Gentile that all nations can be blessed, that the Holy Spirit can come upon all nations and not just Jews, not just a chosen seed in the past is what the law pointed to, right? That it's a covenant of grace given to all not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law and to show us the law unto ourselves, right? Because sometimes the Holy Spirit and Jesus's law almost got worse, right? Remember what he said, it, you know, I, you've heard it said, do not commit murder, but I tell you, if you think a bad thought against somebody, you've committed murder in your heart. You ever done that? E ever been driving down the road and somebody cuts you off? I, I don't know about you, but I sometimes think a bad thought. Maybe it's as simple as, Man, I hope there's a police officer up there. You know, I mean, you've got something that goes in your head. Jesus is going, no, can't do that. You've heard it said, do not commit adultery. And I tell you, if you look lustfully on someone, um, you know, in our, our culture, sometimes our celebrity worship, and we're like, you know, I got a, I've got a crush on so-and-so. And, and it's not just the guys, it's the girls too that say that about other actors. You know, it's, God's saying, no, don't do those type of things. Focus on me. Focus on the gospel of grace and realize you're never going to be 100% righteous in your own. 
quit trying to do it on your own. By faith, come to me. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit you don't have it all together and allow my Holy Spirit to work in you to continue to change and mold you. That's what he does. And that's when he makes us heirs. And that's what we'll talk about more tomorrow. Starting in verse four, the idea of what that means. Heirs of a throne. Let me pray. God, we love you. We just thank you for how a message given to the Galatians nearly 2,000 years ago can still apply to us today. God, forgive me, forgive us for the times where we try to earn our salvation. Instead of focusing our hearts in faith and trust on you and a faith and trust that begins to change us inwardly to where then we want to be different outwardly and corporately, that we want to serve others, that we want to love our neighbors more, that we want to do good things for the kingdom, but not for our name's sake, but for yours. It's not a means of works to gain and earn our salvation. It's a means to show you gratitude for the grace that you've given us. That we want to do more. We're not compelled to. We're not forced to. But we get to. So God, I just thank you for that realization. Thank you that I don't have to try to earn my salvation because I am I'm not a righteous individual. I cannot be righteous without your son, Jesus, clothing me in his righteousness. So God, live in and through each and every one of us. Make us more like your son, more loving and more lovable. So that the world will see you through us. For your glory, for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow again at 930.